Okay, um, this is a walkthrough of lab seven, the CART lab. Um, I've split it into two parts and two videos to make it a little bit less um, long uh, for you to watch. So hopefully you've already watched the two big idea videos that explain how CART works. Um, here we're gonna go a little bit more into the specific coding. Before we do that, um, let me go down here to the first chunk. Um, I will mention we have three new libraries we're gonna use. CV tools we use back with regression about cross-validation. Our part makes the trees. Our part dot plot makes pretty graphs of the trees. So um, if you haven't installed those on your machine or in your uh, folder, you take off the hashtag and you can install those directly. Um, the other thing that I've done here is I've put the read.csv in two different kind of styles. Um, the one that runs automatically here in line 35 downloads the data directly from the internet. Now, there are advantages to doing it that way. By getting it directly from the internet, you know it's fresh. Um, on the other hand, if your internet collection is slow or if um, the data maybe is updated too quickly and you want to just get a snapshot of the data that you can do your work with, maybe you have to do your monthly sales figures or whatever, and you don't want tomorrow's sales figures in them because that's the next month, um, you might want to download a static co uh, copy instead. So um, this line 37 has download.file. So instead, this would download the file one time um, you could put in a C colon whatever, otherwise it installs it into your local project or folder. Um, and then if you do that, then when you want to bring it into R, you just do read.csv with the name of the file. This particular file uses semicolon separation, so you have to remember to put that sep equals uh, semicolon to do that. Um, lastly, we just see the names of the variables here. And you probably remember that the quality variable was a one to nine scale, where the nine was a better quality line. And then these are all these chemical uh, measures, because again, the idea is, can we figure out from the chemistry how good uh, the wine might be? All right, so very simply, the R part command makes a tree model the same way that LM made a regression model. And you can see it even follows that same format. You can do uh, pluses um, if you want to do it that way, or you can use the tilde dot. You can't actually do interactions because that doesn't make sense uh, for a tree. Um, I didn't put any output here, so when you run line 56, all it does is it makes uh, this output object a lot like we had when we did the regression object. Now, you can plot it in base R, but I think it makes a pretty ugly uh, tree when you do that. Um, it cuts the words off funny and they kind of overlap. Um, still, it's pretty easy to see um, that the alcohol level is certainly the first breakpoint. Now, the R part dot plot uh, package that we downloaded it has two commands in it we can do. One is simply rpart.plot, and if you do that, you get a plot that looks like this. Um, and again, the overall average is 5.6. Um, that's 100% of the data. If you split it on whether the alcohol is less than 11 or not, um, if that's yes, you go this way. If it's no, you go this way. And you can see that the difference now is quite uh, telling that this is a 5.4 average, this is 6.1. So the higher alcohol in general has a lower taste than the lower alcohol um, wine. Then you can see some other variables come along. And down here you can see what percent of the data is in each node and what the average score of each of those nodes are. Inside the rpart.plot package is another command called PRP, which stands for a pretty rpart. Um, so it makes a different sort of structure of the tree um, that some people like better. Notice it has less information on it. Um, there are a ton of options built inside of there if you do a uh, question mark or you just do the little help screen uh, for PRP. Um, it gives you um, a whole variety of things and options and extras that you can do about how you um, how you make that work. Um, so regardless of what you want, each node is going to have the average score in it. Um, if you do the simple one, it's going to put all those averages at the bottom with the PRP. It makes them kind of angly. You can see there's going to be these split points. Um, this is different than the classification because now we're not talking about whether or not you fit into a box. We're talking about your average score. So what you can see, though, is as you go down here, this average is the lowest. So um, low alcohol, low sulfate, high volatility makes a very low scoring wine and the high scoring wines are gonna be over here. Within each category, there's typically yeses to the left and right, no is to the right, but um, whether you say alcohol less than or alcohol greater than, and there are options you can do to play with that. So, okay, question one asks you to look at that. Um, you can also get um, the straight output from the R part 
command. And if you do that, um, it kind of explains what the nodes are here. So here's the split point, how many are in it, what kind of uh, deviation you have in each one, and what the average y value are. So this is the same information we see on the tree. Um, it's a little bit harder to read, but if you did want a summary that you could look at later, um, some people like that. I almost never use that. Um, all right, so the next idea we're going to talk about, though, is this cross-validation. So as we talked about before, cross-validation is the idea that we're going to split our data into different categories and see how well it fits against the other things. So we're going to do CV fit um, two different ways. We're going to do it on the R part um, that we're making here um, with the R part object, but we're also going to run it with the linear regression model that we made last time. So we're going to see how the quality varies um, again, we're going to make 10 trees um, for 10 different folds of the data. So we're going to repeat that lots of times, 100 total trees, 100 total regressions, and we're going to see how the error works across all of those. Um, you can see that it actually takes a few minutes to run um, if you're used to the computer just doing very quick things. Um, here we can see that the R part model um, has a 0.68, that was our first command, 0.65 is our um, second one. And the next question asks you to interpret that. Um, another thing we can do is we can fiddle with the complexity parameter. So CP um, stands for complexity parameter. And the smaller you make the number, the more uh, branches your tree is going to have. So if we do something like this and put in CP0001, um, it's going to make a different kind of thing. And we can then do the cross validation to see whether adding branches actually makes a better model or a worse model. So it's a different way of thinking about this idea of parsimony and overfitting that a simple model is often better, but you don't want it to be so simple that you can't uh, make that work. So this lab ends then with you uh, kind of playing with that CP. It's sort of like that clock game we did in the uh, Excel lab where you just make this CP parameter different things you do that CV fit uh, to see if you can find the right value for that. Um, what we did find up here in this first model was that um, these two models were close, but the linear regression was actually slightly better than the tree we made. And so the question is, could we fiddle with the CP in order to uh, beat it? So in the second part of the lab, we'll talk about some more uh, details to make that work.